Hey there, and thanks so much for joining me today on Dana Mobim. Today we are going to number elements based off of the room number of the room that they fall within. So let's go ahead and get started. We're in the sample model, per usual, Snowden Towers architectural model. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the mezzanine plan. There's some furniture up here within the mezzanine that we can actually start to number. I'm going to plug it into the mark value, but we will create the script so that you could plug it into any instance parameter of any category of elements. So we'll make those two values, the parameter as well as the category user specified, right? We'll make those inputs. So to best explain this, let's go ahead and create a schedule. Up under the view tab, we'll go to schedule of quantities, create a furniture schedule. Just to look at a few things here, like the family and type, maybe the level it's on, and of course the mark, which is what we're going to plug the number into. But additionally, you can see that Revit allows you to see available fields from either the room or the space for really any category of, of schedules, this one being furniture, obviously. And you can see we can add the room number and name. I'll go ahead and sort and group this by the level, give that a header and just hide it, right? We have the header sorted, we don't really need it. And so essentially, we're going to plug in a mark value that looks very similar to the room number. However, we want them to be unique. So we're actually going to append a suffix onto the room number and plug it over there. Working within a blank canvas in Dynamo here, we will get the categories. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and once again make this a pink group. Let's say specify category of elements to number. And I'll right click and make this an input. Make the group pink. Per usual. So once again, my user can come in and specify any category that they would like to number based off of the room that it falls within. Go ahead. This case, specify furniture. We'll get all elements of the category. I have it on automatic as it starts per usual. So you can see I get all 186, I'm sorry, 168 elements of furniture within the project here. Now in this case, I actually want to question or query whether these elements are within a room. So within Revit, we can actually see under elements, we have family instances. So in this case, under family instance, I want to query the room. You can also see that it has space just like my schedule does. Come in, question or query whether it has a room. And you can see in this case, I'm getting pretty much every scenario except a few do not have rooms that they fall in. Maybe they fall in the exterior, maybe there's some furniture on an exterior space where there is no room. So I'm actually going to filter these elements out. So I'm gonna ask, is the object null? Object is null. And if it is, I'm gonna go ahead and filter by Boolean mask, the object is null being my mask and the elements being my list, just go ahead and filter those out. So my out elements, those that are not null, will be the elements that I work with. And in this case, I can go ahead and copy this over, ask these elements, in this case, 165, it's now filtered out those three null elements. 165 elements, what room they're in. In this case, I can also ask the element room what number it is. And by doing that, you can see it gives me those values. 
Now, for this scenario, I actually would like to group these elements based off of the room that they fall in. So I'll just go ahead and create a list, group by key, my elements that are in, within a room being my list of grouped elements, and my room number being their key value that I'm grouping by. And we can now see that I get a bunch of grouped lists. This being grouped by those individual or unique room values. Do a little bit of cleanup here. Group all of these elements and say elements in rooms grouped by room number. giving it a very clear des description of what's going on within this group so that when I open this script later or someone else opens this script later they can quickly understand what's going on. So now I can actually start to query how many elements are within each group. The unique keys being once again the room number and my groups being those elements grouped by those unique room numbers. So I'll go ahead and count in the list how many elements are in these groups. Now I don't want to know how many groups there are. This number 12 is telling me how many unique rooms there are with furniture in it. And that's, well, that's wonderful to know, but that's not the information that I need. To look deeper into the list, I'm going to click into my list here and use the levels. And this will ask those 12 groups how many pieces of furniture or how many elements within the category specified, how many are there within those unique keys. So you can see in the first group there's 25, in the second there's two, etc. So now I can create a suffix based off of that value. So I'm going to go ahead and create a range. The start in this case I would like to be 1, ending with these unique values. And I'll step by 1 as well. And you can see that in my first group I get 25, my second group I get 2, my third group I get 3, etc. based off of the amount of elements within each unique room number value. So in addition to this, I want to go ahead and pad these values. I want to have a 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 so that my number values come out much nicer in my schedule and, and overall. Now to do this I will need to create a string from these lists and essentially I'm converting number values, you can see those appear in blue, over to characters. So just essentially ones that can be read as strings or character values rather than numbers. And I'm going to take these strings and I'm going to pad them to their left. My number or string values that I've converted from numbers being the string. My length I want to be 2. You can see if I hover over that it's actually looking for an integer which is a whole number of course. And my padding characters, I want to be zero. I will need to put this in quotations so that it is a string, whereas with a number, I do not need to do that. So my new length will be two, my pad characters will be zero. So I get zero, one, zero, two, and so on. Now if I look at that, I should have that exact situation. So I'll go ahead, do a little bit of cleanup, these will be my suffix get value, or really the, the range that I've created from the number of elements within each room. But I'll just say it's my suffix. 
And in this case, I want to go ahead and add the room number value, the unique key, to this padded value, right, my suffix. So I'm going to go ahead and use a code block, once again, just as I've been using by double clicking. And I'll add these two values, but in the middle, I want to actually add a separator of a, an, an underscore here. X plus an underscore plus my suffix. So my padded value being my suffix, my Y, and my X being my unique keys. And if I look at this, we can now see that I get my room number, a, an underscore, with that range value that I've created. And in this case, I can go ahead now and set a parameter value by name. My value being this padded character value with my room number, etc. However, before I set this, always a great idea to go ahead and set this over to manual and save it. That way I actually know that it's going to work out for me if it, you know, in force close, rub it, or what have you. I'm going to use a string rather than a code block for my parameter name. And the reason that this is, is because with a code block, if I right click, you can see I don't have the option to make it an input. With the string, of course, if I right click, I can indeed make it an input. And so I will ask my user to specify parameter to number. Make it pink. That would be my parameter name. I'm going to once again use mark. I do not want caps. And in this case, my elements would be my grouped values. I want to number them based off of that roomed list, right? If I use my original list of elements, even from my out of my filter, it would be a different organization of list. So I'm just going to pull right from my groups there. And if I run this, I'm going to make this orange, it's creating a transaction in Revit. Call this update elements. Go ahead and run this. You can then see in our schedule we now have our mark value because that's this parameter that we specified updated with our room number and underscore and the range that we created. Now one thing to note is that it is being numbered based off of the element ID. So the first in is the first number, the last element placed would be your last number. So it is in the order of placement. If you were to delete an element, replace it, and rerun the script, it would create a new organization to the numbering system here. There could be multiple ways, of course, that you could force a numbering system, but we would need to work that logic out within Dynamo, right? It's not going to automatically create that logic for you. Thanks so much for joining me today on Dynamo BIM. Hopefully this helps you number your elements based off of the room that they're within. Make sure you check out other videos for Dynamo output information and how to do other things in Dynamo. Make sure you subscribe for upcoming videos. Thanks so much. Need help with Dynamo workflows you've seen on Dynamo BIM or any other Dynamo training or assistance? Our sponsor, BIMXT Network, has you covered. Send an email with your request as well as your contact information to info at cadmicrosystems.com. In addition, 
BIMXC Network holds meetings to bring together bright, curious, engaging people across various disciplines and countries to exchange design and construction technology ideas. BIMXC Network hosts presentations virtually through the online platform as well as in person at locations along the East Coast. For information about the BIMXT Network, please make sure you go to LinkedIn and search for the BIMXT Network group. By joining this group, you'll get information about upcoming meetings, information about previous meetings, including links to the recordings of those meetings, as well as any information about meetings that could be happening near you.